what is up you guys welcome back to my channel and another educational video on building your online business i'm so excited for this one because building a low overhead business was at the forefront of my mind when I was first starting. Y'all know my story at this point if you've listened to my podcast, but I will link that episode down below if you're curious, but I was a broke recent college grad who couldn't find a job and I had just been backpacking across Europe for three months, sleeping in shared hostel rooms and it's safe to say that I did not have a dollar of extra money to my name when I started my business. But that did not mean that I wanted to come across as unprofessional or um, I wanted to like let my clients in right on the lack of funds and finances behind the business. Like that's not necessarily something I was gunning for. So I want to spend today kind of giving a quick and dirty training on the five platforms that I still to this day recommend and use that are free or very low cost to keep your business running very professionally, to keep things extremely organized, to ensure you're never double booked or wondering what the heck you're supposed to be doing and when. These are the platforms that I think can make a huge difference for your brand. And like I said, I'm almost five years in now. The business has grown a ton and I still think these are all great things to use. So we're going to dive in talking about overhead in business in general and spend a little bit of time there. But you guys know if you are interested in the more like financial side of it all, and that's the thing that really piques your interest, I have a whole podcast on financial freedom and money management and education called the First Million Podcast. I will link our most recent episode down below. You can watch those videos on YouTube as well as listen on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Okay, so low overhead in your business basically just means that when you go to take care of your monthly expenses, the things that are already like locked in are as low as they can possibly be. For example, in your life, when you pay for subscriptions that you're like signed up for, so it's Netflix, it's Hulu, it's whatever subscription services you pay for. It's not just streaming stuff. You guys know subscriptions are such a major thing in the world today, like even in our personal lives, in your business, anything you are paying for, your website, domain name, subscriptions to apps and different platforms, that all counts against the money that you actually pocket at the end of the month. And I do want to give a bit of a disclaimer here that it's really important to spend money in your business if you want to make money. It is not going to be of your benefit to focus on like really pinching every penny and never wanting to make an investment into your business. You guys know I'm a business mentor. Like I really recommend investing in your business and your brand, but you have to do it in a way that makes sense. And your overhead or just the things that you're paying out every single month you need to make sure that that stuff really, really feels aligned with you and that you need to be paying for each of those things. Because just like in our personal lives, when we unsubscribe to things and we're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I was paying for X, Y, and Z subscriptions. That was like a hundred bucks a month. That was just down the drain. I had no idea. You don't want that happening in your business when your income every month in the beginning isn't super high. So with all of that said, let's get into my recommendations for platforms that I really think are super helpful, super professional, and are not going to cost you an arm and a leg, if anything at all. Okay, so the first platform that I feel like I discovered when I was starting my business had everything to do with scheduling because my problem that I was trying to solve was like, oh my gosh, how do I get people who are in my DMs on Instagram booked in for a call without going back and forth with them 15 times? well, hey, what time zone are you in? And hey, does this work for you? Does that work for you? That doesn't work for me, but here's another option. That doesn't work. When you actually want to sign a client and you're working with somebody in the DMs who's just kind of a warm lead at the moment, they don't want to go back and forth with you 15 times to pick a time to chat. It's just, they're just going to go ahead and ghost you, right? You need to be like quick and very clear about the way that people can get in contact with you on a consultation call. And you guys know probably, and if you don't, let me just tell you, I specialize in working with online coaches and helping y'all get your business is up and running. And that's not to say that I haven't worked with other businesses, but my line of work indicates a lot of selling of services, meaning you got to get on the phone. You got to get on Zoom. You got to talk to people and therefore like booking in for these consults, making sure people know exactly when you're available and that they're not, you know, you know that they're not booking over somebody else. Like nothing is less professional than being double booked. That is essential. So the platform I recommend for this is Calendly. I think it is so awesome. And as far as I know, you guys, and don't quote me because it's been a little bit since I have first subscribed to these platforms. But as far as I know, there is a free version of everything that I'm going to mention. And I either still use the free version or I upgraded to pro like years into my business. So you can get this stuff for really cheap 
if anything at all. But Calendly is an amazing platform. It's basically an online scheduling tool where you can go in and set your availability for different days and different times and in your time zone. And anybody who clicks that link is then able to adapt to their own time zone. They only see things in their own time zone, which is amazing. You guys, I work with people who literally exist in a different date than me. Like that is how crazy, like when you're working with clients in Australia, it's a big time difference. So Calendly make sure that you are not only not double booked, but that everything is adjusted and not confusing for you and clients that can be located anywhere in the world. And it also has a great integration for Google Calendar and for Zoom. So for me, I link my Calendly link to an application so people can apply to work with me, book their consult in, and then they immediately receive an email that has my Zoom link information for the call. They've filled out an intake form and you can actually curate that inside the Calendly booking, which is super neat. And I think that's really helpful. Um, And then it also shows up on my Google calendar and theirs. So it is like the perfect mixture of scheduling. And I just am obsessed. I use it to this day. I think that most people in online consult booking use Calendly or something very similar. So I highly, highly recommend that. Okay. And I probably should have mentioned this one first, but it did not come into my life until a little bit later, which I am so regretful about because it is the most helpful thing ever. But this is the platform I use to do all of my task and team management We've all been in this position in business and we might still be in it. I'm looking at you guys where you're writing things down on like any scrap piece of paper, like a napkin, you have 15 notebooks, you're just handwriting everything and it's not organized because it's really hard to transfer tasks from one day to the next. And obviously a written like paper planner can get lost. It can get coffee spilled on it. You're going to lose that napkin that you wrote your great content idea down on. It's just like not the vibe. I really think that digitizing your planners is really important. This platform is called Asana and I find it to be like the best way to, for me personally, to communicate with my team, to communicate with myself. I can set a task, you know, to be due way in the future so I can just set it and forget it. And in six months when I need to do something, you know, book an appointment, check in with an alumni client, whatever it might be, it pops up on the day that it's due. Not only that, but inside Asana, you can assign tasks to different people. So I might have a task that is secret to me, something that I need to be doing. I'm the only one who can see it, but I can create teams on Asana that allow me to communicate with different members of my staff basically and let them know what they need to be doing. So like my video editor for this video, I will create a task with the title of this video. It'll have all the information about the posting process in it. I'll assign it to her and put a due date for the day that it's due. And that's all visible just like on the back end. It's not something I have to schedule a call to determine. It's very easy. And I just honestly think it is the best ever. And I highly recommend you guys downloading the mobile app version of Asana and also having it open on a tab on your computer because everything is linked. It's like Google Drive, which I'm obsessed with. And basically you can have, you know, a task that you set when you're sitting at the coffee shop in the app on your phone and it'll come up on your master schedule on your computer. I just think it is literally the best thing ever. And I actually have a whole video that I recorded years ago on this platform. If you're interested in getting a little bit more organized and streamlined with your scheduling, I will have my editor link that up here and down below. It's actually one of my higher performing videos. People really like Asana. So you guys check that out if you want a more in-depth tutorial. So this next one is going to be really helpful helpful to those of you who are debating if you want to pay the big bucks to get your domain name secured, which I do think is helpful, but it's not a necessity by any means if you're really strapped for cash to pay for website setup and or just hosting. Like there's a lot of expenses that are recurrent and that can go into having a website. So what do you do if you want to have an email list, if you want to have like web pages where you can host information and have people, you know, submit their email and then receive something in return, like an opt-in what do you use? So the platform that I've personally used forever is called ConvertKit. I still use it to this day, even though I have a website at this point, I think it's so helpful. I know that's kind of a weird name. I'll have my editor pop that across the screen right here, but ConvertKit is an amazing platform that hosts email lists for you. It allows you to create landing pages, which if you're not familiar with what a landing page is, it is a web page with one purpose or one call to action. So it directs people in like one area. It's perfect if you have an opt-in that you want 
want people to download or one specific thing you want them to do. So an example of a landing page, I'll put that up on the screen right now, but it's a really, really great alternative to building a whole website when you just need a web page and you can build, you know, multiple landing pages inside ConvertKit. I believe they still have a free version that has a lot of different benefits and options. And you're also able to curate emails if you want to send out email broadcasts and get into email marketing. And I know with a low monthly investment, you can get on the automated email train where you can have email sequences set up and email marketing is really effective. It's a whole other topic for another video, but that is the platform that I recommend if you want to get into the simple web page, landing page, email list space, and you don't feel like designing an entire website. I think by now we've probably all heard of Canva, but I want to just once again sing the praises of this graphic design platform that anybody can use. And I'm assuming you guys know at this point, but this video is not sponsored by anybody. Um, this is just my opinions and recommendations, but Canva is like the king of entry level graphic design when you're not a graphic designer. So you can design anything on Canva from graphics for your social media. Anytime you see somebody post like a graphic or something with text over the top of it on Instagram or TikTok, unless it's like in app text, all of that is done on Canva. You can design like literally name the thing and it's possible. All my YouTube thumbnails, any flyers or marketing materials. All of that is done in Canva. It, there's a great free version of Canva. Most of my clients never even need to upgrade to the pro version of Canva, which is awesome because I have like really experienced, like high revenue producing clients who are getting like plenty of views out of the free version of these platforms. So Canva is a must. Anything you need to design, even if you just want to take a look at what your grid could look like and you don't want to create that inside of a planning app, there are like a million different things you can do inside Canva. Anything design related, highly recommend checking that out ASAP. It will be like your best friend for design work. And then last but not least has to do with the video editing and it's the app CapCut. What you guys are going to notice when you get into short form video creation is obviously you have the option to film inside the app. You can film inside the Instagram app. You can film inside the TikTok app, but here's the problem. The quality can be very much subpar when you're filming in app. I don't know what it is, no matter what your camera settings are on your phone. A lot of times quality is just reduced when you record in app. Also stuff is not safe inside the app. What I mean by that is if you sit down and you record, you know, 15 pieces of content, that'd be really impressive. But for maybe like the whole week or the next two weeks and you save them all to your drafts and you're ready to go. But say there's an unexpected update on the app or the app crashes and then all your drafts get deleted. When I'm talking to my new clients who aren't so obsessed with quality, they're really just trying to crank out the content. Time is still a huge factor for them. And I'm always saying they like, do not risk everything getting lost and you losing the work you're putting in because you're relying on drafts, you know, on a social media app to be like the saving place for all of your content. So I really do think that just for security purposes, filming outside your social media apps is helpful. Now, all that to say, CapCut is where you can edit things. You can edit that short form video content together. It's really easy to use. I think that it once you know how to edit on any of your apps, you can figure out CapCut. You can clip, you can crop, you can add overlays, captions, text, all of the things, you know, the whole nine yards. And I just think it is really, really helpful. And it can add this level of professionalism and this edge to your video content while also adding that security. So you guys, I know this was, like I said, a pretty quick and dirty little training, but I really think it's important for you guys to have access to like technical tools and platforms that I use and that your competitors are using and that you're learning how to use those things and that you're not having to also spend a bunch of money to feel like you're keeping up with everyone around you and the platforms that they're using. You absolutely need to be employing the use of different tools and technologies to stay up to date and organized in your business. And I think that being professional needs to be at like the forefront of your focus when you are starting a business because you're proving yourself to people, right? It's kind of like you think of it almost in reverse, like you would need to be more professional and organized as you move forward. But if you don't start out that way, it's really, really hard to grow. So these platforms I think are really, really helpful. You guys, I, they're all available in a mobile version in the app store. Um, but you also can obviously get a desktop version. I think having both is really helpful, but if you guys have any other questions about overhead in business, tracking that, um, any other platforms for like specific topics that I did not mention, you're always 
free to let me know in the comments. You can email me or just DM me over on IG. I will link all of my socials down below. And like I said, you guys, my podcast, the first million podcast, I post an episode every Monday. That's going to be your like financial education one-stop shop. And it's a really fun place and it's growing so much. If you want to see a taste of that, go ahead and check out the TikTok account for the First Million Podcast. I will link that down below and put the handle right here. It is like the most fun spot. I'm putting so much content up every single day. So check that out if financial freedom is a goal of yours and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you like this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.